Time-sensitive networking is a hot topic at the moment. But let me say right away that this is not a technical video about how TSN works. There are already many good videos covering the theory of TSN. In part two of this series, I'm going to show you how to configure TSN on the Hirschman Bobcat switches. In part three of the series, I will show you how to test and demonstrate the TSN network. If you already have Bobcat switches and you would like to follow along, Hirschman has made the TSN code available as a free of charge software download. If you do not have Bobcat switches, but would like to see TSN in action, please keep watching. Hirschman has been selling TSN capable switches for several years. The RSPE and the Octopus 2 switches are designed for experts. They offer a great many TSN configuration options. But of course, with flexibility comes complexity. With the Bobcat, we took a different approach. We decided to simplify the 802.1 QBV scheduling configuration process by offering fewer options, but making these options easier to set up. The Bobcat provides templates for the gate control lists, and it supports only three priority queues. The result is a TSN switch which is easy to deploy and which covers the most widely used operational scenarios. For full disclosure, let me point out that to accurately configure a TSN network, you must take into consideration latency through a switch and latency down a cable. These calculations are beyond the scope of my demo. But for the experts, rest assured, it works. OK, first I will show you how to configure TSN using the built-in graphical user interface of the Bobcat. Then I will show you how to do the same thing much more quickly using industrial high vision network management software. This is a diagram of my demo system. As you can see, it consists of two Bobcat switches, which I've connected together via port eight on each device. I'm going to configure TSN on the link between the two switches. My PC is attached to port 7 of the left Bobcat. I have opened the graphical user interface of both switches in my browser. As you can see, I named one switch BRSA left and the other BRSB right. First, let's check what software is running on each switch. TSN on the Bobcat is supported from version 8.7 onwards, so both devices are running version 8.7. BRSA is running the L2S software. This is the standard software level for the Bobcat switches. BRSB is running the L2A software, which supports more advanced software features. The point to note is that TSN runs on all Bobcat switches, from the lowest cost devices upwards, and it's compatible across all software versions. Back on BRSA, we can see which ports are in use. 
My PC is connected to port 7 and port 8 is the uplink to BRSB. On BRSB, the only active link is the connection to BRSA on port 8. OK, let's get started by configuring the time. I could leave the time at the default value. But it's good practice to set the actual time. In any case, I will use the time later to check the TSN status. I normally just set the time from my PC. Let's make a quick check on BRSB. Now I need to set up time synchronization. The Bobcat offers two options, PTP and 802.1 AS. Both will work with TSN. I'm going to choose 802.1 AS for two reasons. First, it's the time synchronization protocol which is normally used with TSN. Second, it's easy to configure. Just enable it and the protocol handles everything else. On BRSA, you see that port 8 has taken on the role of master. And as you would expect, on BRSB, port 8 is the slave. The clock synchronization is now configured. So let's tidy up the menu before we move on to configuring TSN. This is the main TSN configuration screen. Notice a few things. TSN operation is off. I prefer to configure TSN first and enable it second. In the port list, the port state of the ports is disabled and the time of last activation is the factory default time. Finally, note the TSN cycle time. By default, it is set to 1 million nanoseconds. This value is fine for the demonstration. The Bobcat supports a single cycle time for the complete switch. Now I configure the gate control list. The gate control list defines which time slots will be available inside each cycle time. The Bobcat supports a maximum of three time slots, two high priority slots and one best effort. I will configure TSN on the uplink between the two Bobcat switches, which we already know is port 8. As I mentioned earlier, the Bobcat uses templates to simplify the gate control list configuration process. In total, there are eight templates which cover permutations of the three time slots. 
To further simplify configuration, only the two most commonly used templates are available in the GUI. All eight templates are available via the command line interface or industrial high vision. I've selected the two slot template. Now you see three entries. Index one shows the time allocated to priority slot one, which is associated with ethernet priority seven. Index two shows the time allocated to the best effort time slot, which in this case includes all the other ethernet priorities. Index three shows the duration of the guard band, which is used before the priority time slot. A quick note about the TSN menu. Configured shows which gate control lists have been configured. Current shows which gate control lists are currently active. As you can see, there is no gate control list active. This is because I have not enabled TSN. Now I'll configure TSN on BRSB. Good, the configuration is complete. Now I can enable TSN on the switches. So I switch on TSN and activate it on the uplink port eight. Note the time of last activation. Now you see why it's good to have the actual date and time set on the Bobcat. I do the same on BRSB. Now let's check the current page to see if TSN is active on port eight. And it is. The same on BRSA. Of course, each of the time slot intervals can be modified to suit the requirements of the applications running on the network. Error checking will ensure that total interval time matches the cycle time. Let's try it. I'll start with BRSB. I increase the interval for time slot one to 300,000 nanoseconds. You see that the interval for time slot two has been decreased automatically to keep the total matched to the cycle time. Let's do the same on BRSA. Now we look in the current menu to see what is currently active. And that's it. I've configured TSN on the uplink between the two Bobcat switches. As you have seen, you can configure TSN on the Bobcat switches in a couple of minutes. We've really simplified it. 
but I'm only using two Bobcat switches. If you need to configure a larger number of devices, it could get tedious having to move between the browser graphical user interfaces. The more devices you have to configure, the more likely it is that you will make a mistake. And then you will waste a lot of time looking for the error. So now I will show you how to configure TSN using industrial high vision network management software. It's a lot quicker. Here you see the three devices in the industrial high vision topology map. I'm using exactly the same hardware as I used previously. My PC running industrial high vision is connected to port 7 of BRSA. The uplink between the Bobcat switches is connected to port 8 at each end. To configure both Bobcat switches simultaneously, I'm going to use the multi config function. Step 1 is to check the configuration at device level. The menu down the left side is based on the menu in the graphical user interface of the Bobcat switches. So you will be familiar with it from the first part of the video. Like before, the first step is to configure the time synchronization. So I enable 802.1as. Next, I go to the TSN menu. As before, I will configure TSN first and then enable it. You can see that TSN is currently disabled. Just to be sure, I also check the cycle time which is still at the default value of 1 million nanoseconds. Now I need to use multi-config at port level to configure the uplink ports. The ports screen shows all the ports in my very small network. We already know that only three ports are connected, and these are shown with a ticked status. So I just select port 8 on each switch and start the multi-config. From the TSN menu, we will select the template. As I mentioned before, there are eight templates available. The first two in the list are the same as in the web GUI. The remaining six templates are not so easy to read until you understand how the names are constructed. The name represents the time slots within a single cycle. GB stands for guard band. TC, traffic class, indicates a time slot allocated to an Ethernet priority level. The digits after TC indicate the priority level. For comparison with the web GUI, let's stick to the default two time slot template. Current shows the current value of the selected template. The configured and current menu items are exactly the same as in the web graphical user interface. So you see the gate control list I just configured, and you see that no gate control list is currently active. Next, I need to activate the gate control list for port 8 on each device. 
That is the port level configuration finished. Now I go back to device level and activate TSN. Finally, let's check the current menu at port level to see what's active. As with the web GUI, we can see that the gate control lists are active on each port. As I did before, I can modify the intervals in the gate control lists. And we are done. As you can see, using industrial high vision with just two devices is a lot quicker than using the web GUI. So when you have a larger number of devices, it will really save you time. I would recommend getting started using the web GUI to learn the process and then switch over to industrial high vision when you are familiar with the configuration. You can get a free of charge license for industrial high vision, which will allow you to configure up to 16 devices. I've put the link in the description below. And that's how easy it is to configure TSN on the Bobcat switches. Of course, a full-blown TSN installation needs additional configuration. But you've now seen the concept. If you have a couple of Bobcat switches, you can try it yourself. Remember that the TSN software is a free of charge download. Actually, configuring TSN was the easy bit. How do you know it is really working? In part three, I will show you how to configure reserved bandwidth on an Ethernet network using TSN. And for the demo, I will use exactly the configuration you've just watched.